Hey, it's Joel, the 3D printing nerd, and this is a Murph interview video. And I know that these aren't the highest viewed videos on the channel and not everybody likes these, but this one is incredibly interesting. And so I wanted to preface it with something. And this is me talking about it. And I really, really, really want you to watch this. Please, please, please watch this. This is Daryl Ricketts, who is a forensic anthropologist. And he's, he's a professor of anthropology at Indiana University. And he 3D prints things that the students can actually feel and touch. And by things, I mean sciencey things. He started out with CT scans and then fetal specimens. These are the babies in formaldehyde jars that you see in the, in the depths of the basements of science classrooms across the world. These are crazy. Instead of having to take these things out of, of the formaldehyde in order for students to actually examine them or touch them all the time, he can 3D print these models so that this, the specimen itself doesn't get destroyed from overuse and the students themselves get something to feel and touch. And it's crazy. I took video of these specimens and it's, it's insane. So please, please, please watch this video. Hey, it's Joel, the 3D Printing Nerd. I'm here at the Midwest Rep Rap Festival, and I happened upon this amazing table. First, I'd love to know, tell me your name and tell me what's going on here. My name is Daryl Ricketts. I'm a forensic anthropologist, and I work at Indiana University. I'm a professor of anthropology there. And we try pre 3D printing things that are useful to students that they can use uh, and see and put their hands around. So we started off with CT scans in Boston that I have of some fetal specimens. We're trying to 3D print uh, fetal skeletons so that we can do virtual autopsies and that sort of thing and then a lot of these are ancient hominids that I've got from colleagues or online that we've printed out so um, facial reconstruction skeletal reconstructions from different hominids and this is something that students can actually have without spending a couple hundred dollars on and if they drop it and break it I'm not all that worried about it that's a good point so all of these are incredibly valuable for the education and the research communities and what you're doing is then reproducing this in a way to make it safer and easier for everybody to have access to it. How can you take this further? I mean you've already have an amazing assortment of incredible models. What what more can you do with this? Um, I'm always looking for more files and this is really the future of, of teaching because the nice thing is they can make a discovery tomorrow, scan it, and I can have it in my hands today, so or t the day after that. So, uh, for instance, Homo Nolati, this one here, was discovered in 2015 by some colleagues of mine in South Africa. They wrote an article and had it published where they reconstructed the skull, did volumetric analysis, blah, 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 and then said, and here's our STLs if you'd like to verify our work. That's phenomenal. So to be able to get that, we reconstructed it. I had art students uh, finish it up with clay, and then I rescanned it. So we've got the complete skull, hand bones. We got foot bones. Um, so we're always looking at things like that, new discoveries. I'm trying to branch out into more composite materials now that I've got a duo. Uh, I'd like to be able to use, say, PLA for the inside and then the outside layer in wood or copper or something of that nature. So I'm not using up more expensive things. Um, so we're always looking for new things to print. What's also fascinating about this is I see a Da Vinci machine printing over here. And you, you've gotten some amazing, wonderful quality on some incredible models out of a, out of a Da Vinci machine. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, and I, everybody says that. You know, you got a $400 machine. How are you getting these kind of prints out? So... Uh, the Da Vinci is mechanically a good system. It really is. There's really not much difference between that and some of the others. Uh, I stripped the software out using Repetier Host. I've replaced the extruder with the E3D V6, um, so that helps. And then some of the parts I've replaced uh, to shore it up a little bit, and that's all I've done. I've run 1,500 hours on this thing, and it just keeps chugging right along. I've got a duo now with a dual extruder. Did the same thing too, and it's running great. So yeah, it's like the Volvo of printers, right? Uh, it just keeps right on going. This is incredibly fascinating, and I want people to be able to reach out, find out more information. How can we do that? Um, 
you can find me online, uh, Fetal Reproductions, at Facebook. Just search that. We've got an Etsy page for these, uh, Etsy slash Fetal Reproductions. Uh, because these buy the filament to print the stuff for the students. Cause, so it's self-sustaining. There's really no grant money for this. So we're kind of doing this on a shoestring. Um, or they can give me an email at colorsonfriday at yahoo.com. Be happy to answer any questions they have. And you can follow us on Facebook, see what all we're printing. This is amazing. And I will definitely reach out again. Thank you so very much for Thank giving you. me access to this. And I do seal things with a high five, if you don't mind. High five.